Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 Update, March 22nd, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All of our videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories as of March 22nd, 2020 are the same as yesterday with a couple of noticeable things here. You can see the United States has really taken off here with Spain close on their heels. If we zoom into this area for Canada, you can see Canada's flattened off a little bit and I really like to see this trend. Fingers crossed that this continues. The percentage of deaths is of March 22nd. Canada was 1.36%, which is very respectable. I'm going to overlay the actual numbers of deaths here. You can see Canada had seven deaths yesterday and only one today. If you look at Italy, uh, they still had 650 deaths today. Spain, 378, 285 yesterday. France was equivalent. England, 56 to 48. And the United States saw a very big jump from 46 to 114 today. The growth factors for COVID-19, uh, you remember above one is bad, below one is good. Today we're at 0.57. I will note though, there was much less reported cases uh, on Sunday in all countries. I'm not sure why it was just Sunday reporting or, or what that was. We'll have to watch this trend uh, as we uh, progress through the week. Average growth factors for Canada, 1.06 overall and 1.02 for the last three days. That's great. We're actually approaching one. So testing for COVID-19. So it's really important to test for COVID-19 to help stop the spread of the infection. It allows infected people to know that they are actually infected and then they can receive appropriate care. They can also take measures so they don't infect others by, for example, quarantine, and then allows our health organizations the ability to trace contacts and test those contacts to slow the spread of the disease. Now the World Health Organization had very simple messages for all countries. They said, number one, test, test, and test. And number two, you need to use a comprehensive approach. So they suggested urgent escalation in testing, isolate the positive cases, and then trace the contacts of those positive cases. And this was really the backbone of the response. However, also what's really important is social distancing, hand washing, and coughing into your elbow. And the World Health Organization said to use a comprehensive approach of all three items. So this is how to stop COVID-19. The most effective way to prevent infections and save lives is to break the chains of transmission. How do you do that? You have to test. We have to test every suspected case and isolate the infected individuals. And then we have to go out and find out who they've been in close contact with up to two days before they develop symptoms. And then we test those people as well. If we don't test, it's kind of like fighting a fire with a blindfold on. It's really difficult to do. So with that in mind, how are we doing at testing? Well, Canada's doing pretty good. I'm gonna highlight this here. We've run about 130,000 tests as of March 20th, okay? And that's about 3,400 per million people in Canada, okay? If we compare ourselves to our neighbors to the south, who as of March 20th only ran 102,000 tests, we're actually doing pretty well. So let's look at the new cases per day. And you remember this graph yesterday, and this is the bell curve. And you remember it when an, an, in fact, an outbreak starts, the number of new cases per day rise, and then it ultimately plateaus, and then the new cases per day fall. So let's look at the graphs and see where we are with our countries. All right, there's Italy. They had a little drop off today, but remember I said that a lot of countries had a little drop off uh, uh, today? There's Spain, Germany, France, there's the United Kingdom, and there's the United States. They did not have a drop off today. They continue to climb. And here's Canada. And we had a little drop off here. China, remember, peaked at 4,000 new cases a day and Korea 800 a day. Okay, what's going to break our system is if we overwhelm our healthcare system. So this is the cases per 1,000 hospital beds. There's France. There's United Kingdom. There's United States, Canada. Germany, Spain, and Italy. And they're the two countries right now who are having the biggest trouble. If we zoom down here on day 10 to Canada, we'll see that we've actually tapered off a little bit here. And this is really important because if you think about it, London, Ontario, a city of 500,000, we have a catchment area of probably one or two million people. We have about 150 ventilators. Our hospital beds at the best of time are full and we're usually over capacity. 
So if we have an influx of COVID-19 patients, it's going to make things really challenging. So this is yesterday's graph of the trajectories of different countries for the number of new infections. You see uh, two things I want you to look at, United States here and Canada and Australia here. And if we overlay today's graph, we'll see Canada and Australia are right, right about the same point, which is great. And the USA now has surpassed China. Again, this is the coronavirus deaths. And you can see the deaths are still increasing in the United States, in Spain, United Kingdom, and certainly in Italy as well. So remember, folks, do your part, flatten the curve, fight for Canada by staying home, staying safe, and saving lives.